So for me, if someone has a tough time experiencing and moving through these eight feelings, then it, it really inhibits their life in lots of different ways. So you have a quote from your book and you say, what blocks most people from success and feeling capable in life is the inability to experience, move through, and handle eight unpleasant feelings. Can you tell us what these eight feelings are and how is our success tied to the ability to move through these feelings? Absolutely. The, the eight feelings are sadness, shame, helplessness, anger, vulnerability, embarrassment, disappointment, and frustration. Tell us why those eight. Why those eight? It, because they're the most common, spontaneous, everyday reactions to things not turning out the way that we feel like we need or the way we want. So if you think about going through your daily life and things, and you know, whether it's asking somebody out for a date, it's asking somebody for promotion, it's saying, I love you, or I want to spend more time with you. It doesn't matter which end of the spectrum we go, or I was disappointed about something you did or didn't do. And then it, these same eight, eight feelings or feeling states come up repeatedly. There are conflict and intersection with reality. With reality. We wanted something to happen. It didn't. Didn't. A feeling mustered. Right, right. So the, And why it gets in the way of success is because when people don't want to experience these feelings, they won't, they won't take risks in their life. So I have things I want to say to people, or I have ideas I want to share, but I'm too afraid of public speaking. So I won't take the risk to put myself out there because I don't want to feel, it's not the, it's not the action itself, it's because of the feeling outcome. I want to avoid this feeling. What can I do to stay away from it? Let's not take a risk. Let's not take a risk. And I think everybody can relate to that in some way in their life. It, and it, right. And it doesn't matter the domain. It really doesn't. It could be going out and learning tennis. It could be talking to the boss, talking to your kids. It doesn't matter. It's every single domain of our life. So for me, if someone has a tough time experiencing and moving through these eight feelings, then it, it really inhibits their life in lots of different ways. What other manifestations have you seen that when we design our life around avoiding these feelings, you know, what is the extent of the problem? We talked about avoiding risk. What are some other things that can show up? Uh, I, well, for me, it, it actually, it, 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 there's a kind of a gradated or a graduated slip down, if you will. At the worst is what I call soulful depression. Mm. It's a, and that I think of as a disconnection from ourselves. Lots of times people talk about feeling depressed. And oftentimes I think it's not a genuine clinical depression from psychology standpoint. It's actually soulful depression. It's I'm cut off from myself. I've so distracted or disconnected from the, my feelings, which is really the essence of our aliveness, that I feel dead or empty inside or disconnected. So I'm disconnected from me, now I'm disconnected from you. So that would be the worst outcome. Uh, other outcomes, bodily symptoms, an increased sense of anxiety. Uh, we can get into the imposter syndrome uh, or because I talk about a whole list of distractions in, in one of the chapters in the book, we can look at addictions. Every, all the addictions are going to relate to an, an effort to avoid and distract from what the experience is. So the list becomes somewhat endless in terms of the problems that people have. And what they're doing is now they're, they have the, the problem, if you will, of avoidance that's layered over by all the other subsequent problems. So now it might be a drug addiction because I'm trying to avoid the experience underneath the drug addiction. <laughs> 